Hey, Jeff Lerner here, and welcome to this newest video about how to craft your perfect morning routine. I just wanna say, you know, one of the greatest fallacies in like coaching and wisdom and teaching is that it's not how you start, it's how you finish. I think that's total hogwash, right? Because we all know that it's a lot harder to play from behind. We do our best work when we have time, we have flexibility, we have freedom, we have the creativity of thought that comes from not feeling too under the gun. You don't go out and, and lollygag for three quarters and get down by 30 points and think that's okay because it's not how you start, it's how you finish. We'll, we'll make it all up in the fourth quarter. That's a disastrous strategy. And the reality is the best predictor, this is from psychology, this isn't just my opinion, the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. If you're at halftime, the best predictor of how you're gonna play the second half is how you played the first half. The best predictor of how you're gonna finish your day is how you start your day. In fact, how you start usually predicts how you finish. So this idea that it's not how you start, it's how you finish, I'm throwing it out, I'm saying it's total nonsense, and then in fact, if we wanna achieve everything we have coming to us in life, we need to focus on getting really, really strong starts. That's why this video is gonna be about how to craft the perfect morning routine to maximize your start to the day so that you can maximize the value of every day. So, your morning routine. You know, I've studied success, I've studied successful people for years now. And I can say if there's one common thread that comes up in conversations and interviews, whether you're talking Tony Robbins, Tim Ferriss, Oprah Winfrey, Tim Cook, Mark Zuckerberg, Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, these are people who I've actually watched interviews with and, and listened and, and taken notes about how they do what they do, how they achieve what they have in this world. There's one common thread and it's a specific intentionally crafted morning routine. This, I believe, is the most common, consistent attribute across all really, really successful people. I actually think that a failure to have a structured morning routine is essentially throwing your life out to chance and saying, well, I hope things work out. And if you know anything about me or anything about my company, anything about our values, you know that we live by choice, not by chance. I think that the choice to craft an intentional morning routine is a choice to resist and reject chance as determinant of the outcome of our lives and in fact to choose our own outcome. So let's start with the word routine. You know where the word routine comes from? Routine, the root. Root comes from the word for road. It literally means the road or the path. It's simply the road that you're on. Will Durant writing about Aristotle, it's a quote that usually gets attributed directly to Aristotle, but he said, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not a virtue, but a habit. We are what we repeatedly do. And what we repeatedly do is walk down the road that we're on. So if we wanna be excellent, if we wanna be successful, if we wanna be productive, we need to have a routine, i.e. a road of success or production or effectiveness that we walk down every single day. That's all a morning routine is, is it's deciding what you want to pave your road with. The road that ultimately determines the path you're on for your life. Now I mentioned all these successful people and how once I learned that a morning routine is a pretty darn important part of being really successful. I had a problem. I, when I did this study, I was in my late 20s and I was tired of being broke. I was tired of being kind of a you know dejected loser and felt like I was floundering in life. I was a musician. You know, let's be clear, being a really good musician is a lot of hard work, but it doesn't always mean having the most rigorous and disciplined approach to our whole life. A lot of musicians, at least my friends and I, we would go into our cave and, or what we called the woodshed and we would shed on our instruments like I was not a highly effective balanced person at that point in my life. So I was like, okay, what are all these highly effective and balanced people doing that I'm not doing? I, I did my study, I took my notes and I realized, well, they all have morning routines. Not only do I not have a morning routine, I don't even hardly have a morning because I sleep the whole thing away, right? Like I'm staying up late, I'm at the gig and I, and you know, it's not that you can't adjust, you know, based on your schedule, you could start your morning routine at 10 a.m. But the problem is I was waking up with no, no structure, no direction, no, in fact, for me, because my gigs tended to be at night, I was dividing my day into like the time from when I wake up to when I actually have to kind of start getting ready for work and going into professional mode. And then, and that was usually like 6 p.m. And then 
So I didn't even really think of my day starting until 6 p.m. And I realized if I'm gonna be successful, if I wanna have a life more you know, like these other people, excellence, achievement, respect, pride, confidence, if I wanna have that life, I probably should uh, maybe try to make my life look more like theirs. And so I flipped it. I said, I'm gonna start, instead of th feeling like, oh, I'm getting ready for the gig at 6 a.m. or 6 p.m., I started going, I'm gonna get, start getting ready for the gig of life at 6 a.m. And man, it was hard. It was like pulling teeth to take a, a musician who's been sleeping till 10 a.m. and who, who stays out till three in the morning and who doesn't have to be anywhere first thing in the morning and actually really reform that person, me, reform me into being an early riser and a go-getter and a disciplined action taker. Oh, it was the hardest year of my life. But finally I did it. That was over 10 years ago when I finally dialed in the 6 a.m. I can say that now I get up at 3.30 a.m. every morning. I have a very specific morning routine that involves intention setting, gratitude reflection, and then it involves piano practice because I'm once a musician, always a musician. Then it involves going to the gym. Then it involves time with family. In fact, I can reasonably say that I get more done by 8 a.m. when my actual workday starts then a lot of people get done in their entire day, especially when they're talking about things they do that create value in their life other than their job or their business. With that in mind, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about exactly what I believe constitutes an effective routine and ultimately how to help you craft an effective routine so that you can start your day and thus predict an effective finish for your day most productively. So in my company, Entra, which Entra Institute, we teach entrepreneurialism, we teach you know, success and how to kind of achieve everything this world has to offer in, in the modern economy. We have something that we call the Entra way. And the Entra way involves living what we call the Entra day. And it's really, really simple. And everybody can kind of create their own, um, their own flow within this framework. And it basically is this, you wanna start the day with a morning routine that includes very specific intention setting, and this is key, the review of a plan that's already set. In other words, you don't wake up in the morning and plan your day, you wake up in the morning and review the plan that you've already created for your day, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain in a moment how you do that. So that's the morning intention, and then you try to check off the highest value activities that you can within the flexibility of your schedule. For me, that's music time, that's gym time, and that's family time. And then throughout the course of your day, and this can be included in your morning routine, we teach that you wanna make very specific and meaningful deposits into the three key accounts of life. So just like a, a bank account, you make deposits into a bank account so that there's capital and there's cushion and there's security that you can draw from when you need it. I think of the three main accounts of life as your physical account, your personal account, and your professional account. And that the more deposits you can make into those accounts, the more there's gonna be available when you need to make a withdrawal. In other words, think of, think of the gym, right? Those are, you're making deposits into the physical account of your life. So then, in that one moment when you're on a canoe trip and the canoe flips over and your kid is pinned under the canoe and you're afraid they're gonna drown and you have to go lift the canoe off of them, you have the strength to do it. In other words, you can withdraw from that account because you've been, depo been depositing strength into that account every day by going to the gym, right? That's just kind of a you know, casual example of making deposits and then the money's there or the, the resources are there when you need to make a withdrawal. So every day you're making deposits in your physical account, your personal account, and your professional account. Personal, that means building a great marriage, building great relationships, building good friendships, building you know, connection with your kids every day so that when your kid's doing something that you, you are concerned about and you need to sit down and say, hey, listen, son or daughter, we need, you know, let's talk about this. And essentially what you're trying to do is cash in on the credit that you've been building by making deposits in that account every day. It's like the number one thing I see parents screw up is they, when, by the time it's time to sit down and talk to their kids, there's no credit built up. They haven't been talking to their kids every day and becoming friends with their kids and building relationship with their kids. So there's no capital to cash in when they need to have a corrective conversation with their kids, right? This applies physically, personally, and professionally. So the entre way, the entre day, is a morning routine with setting intention, reviewing the plan, and then it's a physical deposit, a personal deposit, and a professional deposit every single day, something meaningful, something that accrues value, something that means that you're gonna be richer in that account when you wake up the next day. And then the fifth and final element of the Entre Day is a nightly reflection, assessment, and planning session. So every night, and you can literally do this in five minutes, by the way, you sit down, 
you reflect on your day. You say, did I set my morning intention? Did I execute on my morning intention? Did I follow the morning plan? Did I make a deposit meaningfully in my physical account, my personal account, my professional account? If yes, great, write down a 10 and be satisfied and wake up the next day and go, sweet, yesterday I got a 10, today I'm gonna get another 10. If you didn't do those things, grade yourself, write down a four, write down a six, and then the next morning you wake up and you're gonna see that little piece of paper and you're like, ugh, yesterday I finished with a six. I don't wanna do that again, I don't like the way it felt, and you'll be encouraged to do better. So like I said, reflection, assessment, that's the grading system, and then pre-planning, which means actually based on the results of the day and all the other things going on, going ahead and setting the plan for the subsequent day, the night before. This is one of the greatest hacks. And I actually got this from a book called The Mormon Way of Doing Business. I'm not a Mormon, but statistically, there is a disproportionate percentage of Mormons in key executive positions throughout the Forbes 500, 500 biggest companies in the United States. And they did a study and they did a survey and they started interviewing them and they said, what are the common behaviors that not only have allowed this group of people to achieve massive business success, but they also tend to have good relationships with their families and kind of a set of practices that are consistent with this full fulfillment. Again, I'm not Mormon, but I'll learn from anywhere, right? And in this book, it, they said one of the most common themes throughout this book is that for whatever reason, the people they interviewed would actually plan their day the night before. And I was like, aha, light bulb, man, that makes so much sense. The Navy SEALs say, by the time you need to get ready, it's too late to get ready, so get ready now. And for me, when I wake up in the morning and you know, maybe there's emails, maybe there's phone calls, maybe there's all this stuff to do, there, there, I have all, the, it's, it's like, it's almost too late for me to effectively create a plan for the day. It's helped me so much to have done that the night before. So again, just to recap the, the entre day, morning, intention setting, and review of the plan and the routine, whatever that is, and we can talk a little bit more about how to construct that. And then every day you want physical deposits, personal deposits, and professional deposits. And then every night you do the nightly review, assessment, and pre-planning for the next day. Okay, so I hope that's been helpful for you and, and hopefully encouraged you that, you know, A, here's a process for creating this routine and structure in your life, but also, um, you know, and I could run down the list of names, hopefully a, an insurmountable body of evidence that says all those really, really successful people, they have these types of routines. Like Mark Zuckerberg wakes up at the same time every day, puts on the same outfit every day, does the same workout every day. Richard Branson wakes up every day at sunrise, goes swimming or kite surfing around his island, must be nice. Tony Robbins wakes up at the same time every day, jumps in an ice cold bath, does his breathing exercises, does his gratitude journaling, Elon Musk wakes up, I can't remember what time Elon Musk works out or wakes up every day, sees his kids off to school, eats, uh, skips breakfast, he, Elon Musk doesn't do breakfast, and he actually chunks his day into five minute increments, that's pretty intense, works Mondays and Fridays at SpaceX, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursday, Thursdays at Tesla, works between 85 and 100 hours a week, Oprah Winfrey, Mark, Mark Wahlberg, the Hollywood actor, you know, Marky Mark, he gets up at 2.30, every morning and has a routine that's all fitness and health based from 2.30 to 10, goes to bed at 7.30. So again, you can, you can adjust this. Like I can go on and on around the list. In fact, one, one book recommendation I'll give you is a book by Hal Elrod called Miracle Morning. Or if you wanna skip the book, I'll just tell you what it says. He has an acronym called SAVERS. And it is a really good book. I, I listened to the whole thing on audiobook and it really inspires you as to the power of the morning routine. But I can tell you briefly what SAVER stands for. It stands for silence, moment of silence, affirmations, saying positive things to yourself, um, V, visualization, seeing the picture of your day well executed. E is exercise, not surprisingly. And then R is reading. He likes to read something every morning. And S is scribing. He likes to journal every morning, very often in a, uh, you know, documenting his gratitude. Like, these are very consistent principles that you find from high achievers over and over and over. Anyway, like I said, I hope that I've inspired you to create your perfect morning routine as the footer for your perfect day so that you can ultimately use it as the routine, the route, the pathway to your perfect life. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Feel free to leave any comments or questions below this video. And I would invite you to subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos several times a week, almost daily. And uh, I'm just committed to bringing you value and trying to help you live as awesome a life as possible by sharing what's worked for me. Thanks again for your time. I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Take care.